Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be here in the Lord's house on this Trinity Sunday. Uh, today, as we celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday, we'll do so looking at our triune God through the lens of what Jesus says about himself in John chapter 8. And so uh, we'll look at that, and that'll be our focus here on this Holy Trinity Sunday, and our worship together will begin with our opening hymn number 940. Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. 
And in the stead, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him, because he has shown his mercy to us. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. Or let your holy one see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from the 8th chapter of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call? Does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her, takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries aloud. To you, O men, I call, and my cry is to the children of man. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his work the first of his act of old. Ages ago I was set up at the first, 
before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depth, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. Before he had made the earth with its shields or the first of the dust of the world. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned the sea its limit, so that the water might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the children of men. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the second chapter of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, losing the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One seek corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh seek corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witness. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. The Jews answered Jesus, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. But you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Be, o Let us 
this time to confess our faith using the words of the Athanasian Creed spoken responsibly. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will, without doubt, perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this. That we worship one God and Trinity, and in Trinity and Unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated or three infinites, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Spirit Almighty. And yet there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each, each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Father is not made, nor created, nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created, nor begotten, but of proceeding. Thus, there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. Three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, uh, as has been stated above, the Trinity and unity and unity and Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of your rational soul, Equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one of Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but the mighty unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. Who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all people will rise again from their bodies, and give them an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe in faith, believe in firmly, cannot be saved. He may be 
seated. The children are welcome forward for the children's message. Good morning. How are you guys today? Good. Good. Still waking up a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, today we celebrate Trinity Sunday, right? We just uh, confess the Athanasian Creed, which is the creed that we use only one time a year on this Trinity Sunday because it goes into great detail about our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so what I want to talk to you guys today about is the work of of our triune God and how he works for us each day. And so we talk about God the Father. He is the creator, all right? Can you say creator? Creator, creator right? He created all things uh, just by speaking, right? And he also continues to create. We also have God the Son, who is redeemer. Can you say redeemer? Redeemer. He redeemed us. You know what that means? What does redeem mean? He forgives us from our sins, right? He bought us back. That's what redeem means, right? He bought us back. And so he gives us that forgiveness, right? Very good. And then God, the Holy Spirit, is who we call a sanctifier. And sanctifier means to make holy, to keep holy. And so we have three persons of our one triune God who are constantly at work for us, for our good, creating, redeeming, and sanctifying. Those are three uh, key words I want you to remember as we think about our triune God and and how he continues to work for us. He continues to always provide for us and and creating for us and and redeeming us and giving us forgiveness and sanctifying us, keeping us in the true faith and nurturing that faith through God's word and promises. Okay? And so that's what we celebrate today on this Trinity Sunday. Uh, Will you guys hold your hands and and pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for always working for us as creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. Keep us in the one true faith to life everlasting. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you guys very much for coming up. You can take one of these to your seats if you'd like. And our worship will continue with the hymn of the day.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, when it comes to the Trinity, there is really only one important question. And it's not so much about the Father, and it's not about the Spirit. The question centers on Jesus. And the question is this, who is Jesus? Or as the Jews in our text put it, who does Jesus make himself out to be? Now the answer to that question not only provides the key to understanding the Trinity, but it's also the most important question that we can ask, period. And there are certainly uh, a lot of correct answers. Peter gave a good one in Matthew chapter 16 when he said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. John the Baptist gave a good answer as well as he pointed to Jesus and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Thomas finally got it right after doubting and said, My Lord and my God. Even Mary Magdalene had a good answer in John 20 when she called the risen Jesus Rabboni, teacher. Historically, the church has offered its own answers, often in response to confusion or misunderstanding. And the Athanasian Creed is a great example of that. We know that the, the Nicene Creed was, was put together in response uh, to Arius and, and his teaching that Jesus was not true God. That teaching uh, didn't fully go away, and so the Athanasian Creed was also put together to, as a confession of, of who God is as our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in that creed, we confess that Jesus is uncreated, infinite, eternal. He is perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh. He is not two, but one Christ, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. These answers are certainly good and right. That's what we confessed a little while ago in the Athanasian Creed. But today we're going to focus mainly on what Jesus says about himself in our gospel text from John chapter 8. And as with everything, context is key here. Jesus' confession in this text was not part of some private lesson to his disciples. It wasn't a dogmatic treatise on the doctrine of God. It came at the end of a brawl with the Jews who rejected him. And the scuffle began back in John 8, verse 31, when Jesus announced that he would set his disciples free. The Jews bristled against the implications by denying their need for freedom. They said that they were children of Abraham and had never been enslaved to anyone, even though that wasn't true. And this led Jesus to hit back with the accusation that their father was actually the devil. And that led to today's text, which opened with the Jews making a similar counterclaim. A demon possesses him, they insisted. But Jesus wouldn't let that stand. He called them liars. And then if that were not enough, he made an astounding claim, saying, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. When Jesus uses that phrase, I am, he's speaking the divine name, Yahweh. And the Jews, they got the point here. They got the point that Jesus was claiming to be God. And this wasn't the first or only time that Jesus claimed it either. Jesus used many I am statements using that divine name. And they responded here in this instance by picking up stones to stone Jesus to death. But it was not yet his time. Jesus' moment would come 11 chapters later. And when it did, the Jews would remind Pilate of his blasphemy and make sure he got his due. 
And Jesus' claim there about being before Abraham is what landed this particular text on Trinity Sunday. But as astounding as co-eternity and co-equality with the Father and majesty and glory is, it's not the most significant answer Jesus gave in the gospel reading. Not for us, at least. What matters for us, really, is what he said about what he does rather than who he is. And for this, we turn back to verse 51. In John 8, verse 51, it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Really, this is arguably more significant for us than any Trinitarian explanation. More helpful than any Trinitarian analogy we could invent. But how? The Jews asked Jesus in John 8, verse 53. Who do you make yourself out to be? But just like in Jesus' time, today there are many answers given as well. And some are false and need correction. Some would say that Jesus was just a really good man for a good example for us to follow and showing love to others. Some, such as believers in Islam, believe that Jesus was a prophet, but not true God. Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons see Jesus as a God, but not the eternal Son of God being one substance with the Father. Prosperity Gospel views Jesus as some kind of divine vending machine to reward our faithfulness with worldly success and happiness. And still, if we are truly honest with ourselves, we must admit that we sometimes live our lives as if Jesus isn't really necessary or all that important. We live like we think we're doing okay on our own. We don't need Jesus. But all those views ignore our sin. They ignore our need for a savior from sin. But Jesus' answer in verse 51 is clear and direct and always significant. He is the one who saves us from death. That's what the name Jesus literally means, Yahweh saves. Now, for those who may be able to ignore their mortality, this claim may not mean too much. But to you and me, to anyone who has watched a casket close for the last time, or anyone whose body has begun a slow but certain descent, this promise means and transforms everything. It matters. This promise matters when death is staring you in the face, that you've been baptized into this one, into Jesus, who has defeated death, who has defeated the grave for you. So that death will not be the end for you, but you will pass through death to life with him. And it matters. It matters when the trials and, and tribulations of this world are flung upon you. That you have received the very body and blood of this Jesus who endured it all with you, who knows it, who has promised to be with you through it all. And it matters when Satan floods your minds with the thoughts of all of your sins and failures and shortcomings, shows you how unworthy you really are. It matters that you hear the absolution of Jesus, who loves you, who came and who died for your sin, your unworthiness, and who says to you, I took care of all that. I forgive you. Jesus' sacrificial life and death paid for our sins to grant us his forgiveness. Baptized into his death and his resurrection, we know that life, eternal life, has the final word. And so Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of the Father from eternity, gives us this life. And from these promises flow a lifetime of doing what he says, which from our text we see is namely keeping his word. How do we do that? How do we keep his word? 
Well, first, we need to realize that this keeping first involves the gift of faith that clings to Christ, that clings to his promise and his promises of salvation. And so by faith, by God's work in us through faith, we keep his word by reading the scriptures, clinging to God's promises. We keep his word by joining together as we have today with our brothers and sisters in Christ in worship, in Bible study, in conversation. We keep his word with our daily habits of devotion and prayer. What a blessing it is to keep Jesus' word and trust his promises to raise us from the dead. But we also keep his word by living out our faith. By living out our faith in the midst of this world. In our daily lives, as we go out from here, certainly we come across many people who don't share the same confession as we do about our triune God. And lecturing them on the topic will likely not convince them. Reading them, the Athanasian Creed probably won't do the trick. But here's what you can do. Let others see the fruits of faith in you. As you build relationships and and friendships with others, use the opportunities that God has put in front of you to share your hope in Christ as your Savior. Share the gospel with them. Share the good news of forgiveness, life, and salvation through Christ. And by hearing the gospel, they also may be brought to eternal life through our one God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This time, please stand for the prayer of the church. Blessed Father, from you comes all that is, and we are forever indebted to your grace for the gift of life. Receive this day our special thanks for the redemption you have provided in Christ Jesus, your Son, and for the work of the Spirit in bringing us to know you by faith and to be adopted as your children by baptism into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Father, you desire not the death of the sinner, but that all may live. Grant your Holy Spirit that, hearing your word, all people may be brought to repentance and may confess with us their faith in Jesus Christ as Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Father, you have suffered fully the cost of love through your Son. Give healing and peace to all the afflicted, the grieving, and the dying especially those who have requested our prayers, including Sharon McAllis, Kathy Montgomery, Don Rahm, June Melton, Dolly Newman, Jerry Graziano, Joel Graziano, Debbie Heitman, Jean Heitman, Justin C., Jean Ristow, Kathy Kendrick, Nevin Curtis, Susan Burrell, and Danny Griffin, and those we name in our hearts. Give them all that is needful, that they may endure their illness confident of your promise and your presence. Supply them with grace sufficient for their every need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Blessed Father, your Son was the voice that spoke all things into existence, and your grace still preserves all that you have made. You did not abandon your people when they abandoned you, but you have delivered us by the blood of Christ. Grant us your spirit that we may know your word and keep it in faith through all the days of our earthly pilgrimage until we are joined with faithful Abraham, with patriarch, prophet, apostle, and evangelist in your presence forevermore. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, the offering is brought forward.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please stand for the singing of the note, Demetrius. Thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn number 507. it is to know that as 
God's children baptized into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that we have that promise that as we keep his word, we will never see death. A few uh, quick uh, announcements here today. Our Genesis Bible study with Pastor Warner continues Wednesdays at 630 Um our Zoom Bible study continues Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock. Um, you also you'll see some information on page 17 in the bulletin there about CPH Reads, the Concordia Publishing House. Our, our Lutheran Publishing House has put together a summer reading program for all ages, and so you can check that out online. Uh, one thing that is not in the bulletin uh, is we do have a date for Vacation Bible School now. It'll be the week of July 11th through the 15th. Uh, and so more information on that will be uh, coming out very soon. Uh, any other announcements this morning? Um, one other quick thing is I will be having to leave uh, very shortly here after church to attend the uh, installation service of my brother-in-law in Batesville, Arkansas. Uh, they've given me about enough time to get down there without speeding too much. And so I uh, appreciate your uh, understanding and, and uh, me having to leave uh, very quickly here. Um, but other than that, uh, have a great day in the Lord.